I think the thing that's got me so hooked is the fact that you can be sitting on your couch drinking a cup of coffee and within 30 minutes, 40 minutes, either paddling out the creeks or uh, getting your buddy to drive you across a bridge, you can find yourself in the middle of just a huge wilderness. And uh, there's a lot that can be on your mind, ships, currents, the food chain, whatever else, but uh, at some point, about that midpoint for me, you find yourself just completely obsessed with chasing the next wave and everything, everything comes down to just the focus on running the boat and going as fast as I can and just everything else melts away. The legend is that the first surf skis came from uh, two brothers who were, two Australian brothers who were um, lifeguards and in the winters they were tending their oyster uh, beds offshore and they were using their prone boards which are like a big, uh, a big paddle board, a big surfboard that you lay on and, and paddle with your arms or you can kneel on them and paddle them. And uh, as they were going offshore into the wind and stuff, they, uh, they looked at each other and they were like, you know, we should try using kayak paddles with these. So they started sitting on them and using kayak paddles. There's even some pictures of them, like, like mid, between the wars, like between World War I and World War II, guys standing on these big paddle boards using kayak paddle standing, which is like, I mean, that's, that's decades before the first paddle boards ever came out, like stand-up paddle boards. Um, so there's a, a, a kind of a, a bloodline that goes that way, too. But, um, so they started sitting on their prone paddle boards using kayak paddles. And then they realized, hey, if we put a little dimple, if we shape a little dimple into our prone paddle board for our butt and put a padding in there, it's a little bit more comfortable. And then they're like, well, it'd be nice to be able to steer. So they replaced, I don't even think they had fins on those prone boards. I think they put rudders on them. And then they put, uh, there's pictures of um, just the little pedals with wires guiding, steering the... Uh, steering the paddle boards. So that, I think, is where surf ski came from. I think that's why the name isn't like kayak or something, ski kayak or something like that. Um, I mean, the, the, the governing body of, of racing canoes and kayaks calls them uh, unlimited offshore racing kayaks. Uh, usually composite build up now. Um, single compartment in that there's... Um, there's not any real place like a kayak for water to get in while you're paddling it. Uh, if you breach the hull or something, yeah, water can get in because they're hollow. Uh, you sit in a cockpit, but the cockpit, like you can see, is, is basically kind of on top of the boat. Um, feet go in against a, uh, a footboard, and then there are pedals that control a rudder, an underhull or an understern rudder. Oh, three feet two feet in from the, uh, from the stern, uh, and that rudder gives you the ability to, um, to really track uh, very true in the water. So your, your, um, your paddling is actually providing you your momentum and your, and your propulsion, and uh, you can control your steering really, really precisely with the pedals, um, which gives you the ability to really chase swell uh, very precisely and gives you a very quick acceleration um, to get on open water swell. Uh, that's primarily what they have developed into is a craft for chasing big open water swell. Uh, that's not to say that they're not used for like everything because they're very very uh, efficient in flat water, in rough water, um, once you kind of get your stability down. With the paddle, a lot of times, people that are coming from recreational uh, kayaking, uh, you know, they've been using the flat paddle that you get at um, when you're just renting a kayak or even when you buy a kayak, um, which traditionally till like 2000 or 1985 was the standard competition paddle too. Uh, and then around then, uh, the Swedes came up with these articulated paddles, which are shaped like a, like a wing, uh, known as a wing paddle. 
Um, and the stroke is really unfamiliar to people. Uh, but to be fast, you uh, to really use these boats to their potential, you're going to have to you're going to have to learn the wing paddle stroke, uh, which involves putting this the paddle in real close to the boat, and you kind of use all your all your big muscles and your frame to pull, really to push the boat by the paddle in the water. Crossings seem to be, I mean, for me, they, they captivate me because there is no turning back. You, you're going 12, 13 miles. You, you go the first two miles and you're, you're realizing 25, 30 mile an hour winds, you're not gonna turn around and paddle back. You're, you've gotta go, now you're committed. There's swell and, uh, and wind that's trying, sometimes trying to push you offshore and you're trying to find your way to get back in and it's just, it just makes you kind of suck into just this like one-minded uh, flow uh, to get where you've gotta go. Um, and it's, it's awesome.